The roller coaster provides an opportunity to visualize the exchange of energy that occurs with moving objects. For the sake of this simulation, we're going to make a big assumption that the dissipative friction forces between the roller coaster wheels and the track can be neglected so that potential energy can be converted directly to kinetic energy and vice versa. This is a somewhat terrible assumption, but that doesn't mean our model isn't worth exploring. If you'd like to look more carefully into how dissipative forces like air resistance and friction affect motion, check out our ski jump simulation, our cliff diver simulation, and our malt shop simulation. Where does the energy of a roller coaster come from to begin with? As you'll see when we hit play, the roller coaster is lifted to the top of the initial hill. Perhaps you've experienced this. It feels like a machine is pulling you up. That machine is doing work. Work is a transfer of energy through the application of a force. Here, the machine is pulling the roller coaster uphill. This initial energy transfer provides all the energy we'll need for our ride. The work is transferred to the gravitational potential energy of the system. In very basic terms, it takes energy to separate the roller coaster from the Earth. The coaster also has some small amount of kinetic energy at the top of the hill because it hasn't totally come to a stop. When the coaster starts to fall down the first hill, it converts potential energy for kinetic and speeds up. Then kinetic energy is converted back to potential as it goes up to the top of the loop. Then again, it converts kinetic energy to potential as it comes back down. This exchange continues as it moves over the hill at right. Finally, the brakes are applied and much of the initial energy is dissipated as heat, and the simulation ends here. We have displayed the energy transformations in two ways. Both ways are equivalent, just different representations. It's always helpful for a physicist to look at the same situation through multiple lenses. On the left is a real-time measure of the energy in different forms with time. The column graph bars rise upward and downward over the course of the run. Notice that the total energy remains fixed after the initial work done by the lifting machine. Energy is exchanged between forms, but conserved. The graph at right shows the same thing, but as a line graph representing the different values with time. Notice again that after the initial lift, the total energy stays the same, as we'd expect. A conservation law is a law about how things stay the same. Physicists find such laws useful because they can account for missing amounts by holding on to the assumption that the total hasn't varied. Conservation laws are useful, but they are not sacrosanct. In the 18th century, it was proposed that in any chemical reaction, the total mass of the system stays constant. This law of conservation of mass held for a long time, and nobody could imagine a situation where the total mass of a system would change. Only in the 20th century, thanks in part to the work of Einstein, did we begin to realize that mass can be converted to energy and vice versa in nuclear reactions. So all conservation laws, including energy conservation, are useful to us until they no longer become so. You can play around with the initial mass of the coaster and the hill height and see how energy transforms in this simulation. I hope you enjoy and thanks for watching.